Is Ethereum as safe as most think it is? It's understandable that Ethereum, striving to become a global, permissionless, and credibly neutral smart contract platform, could be perceived as a threat for the powers that be. So, how is Ethereum protecting itself? Any party which might want to see Ethereum fall or manipulated for their own gain could launch various types of attacks against the network. However, we'd be very wrong to think that Ethereum doesn't have any defenses of its own. Some people might think that an attacker can make new ETH appear out of thin air or randomly drain ETH from any account. But this is not the case, as transactions still need to satisfy basic criteria to be approved by the network, or otherwise they would simply revert. So, in reality, there are three main things that an attacker could hope to achieve. First, there is something called reorganizations, or as the techies call it, reorgs. This little maneuver lets attackers play around with Ethereum's blocks, either including including or excluding specific blocks. This can lead to mischief like double spending or extracting value by manipulating transaction orders so that they could benefit by being a step ahead or behind others. A reorg could also be used to stop certain transactions altogether, essentially censoring them from the record. Next is double finality, which occurs when two forks or versions of the Ethereum blockchain finalize at the same time. Think of it as two separate timelines of events, both declared to be the real deal. The other possible outcome might be finality delay. In the Ethereum world, finality is like a seal of approval, confirming that transactions are set in stone and can't be changed. So this type of attack messes with that very foundation by stopping the network from reaching the necessary conditions to finalize sections of the chain. Since many applications running on Ethereum, especially financial ones, depend on this swift seal of approval to function smoothly, it puts a wrench in the whole system. Now that we've talked about what attackers might want, it's time to explore how they can attack Ethereum's proof of stake mechanism. Most attacks typically require an attacker to not only have considerable technical expertise, but to have accumulated large amounts of ETH in order to gain influence over the network. The more ETH the attacker owns, the more powerful the possible attacks. There are a few important thresholds of ETH an attacker must own in order to carry out certain attacks. The first important threshold is 33% of the total stake. 33% is important as it represents one third of staked ETH. And an attacker with this amount of ETH can prevent the chain from finalizing without having to finally influence the actions of other validators. For instance, rather than voting maliciously, they can simply go offline. This is because Ethereum requires two thirds or a super majority to come to consensus for finality to occur. The Ethereum protocol's defense for this is called an inactivity leak, where inactive or offline validators will have their staked ETH slowly bled away until they no longer represent 33% of the validator set. This mechanism ensures that inactivity comes at a cost to validators, and even if many validators are inactive, the chain can eventually move forward. The second threshold is slightly higher at 34% or more. With a complex attack under specific conditions, which we won't go into detail here, an attacker with 34% or more of the total stake could also double vote with all of their validators, causing the blockchain to fork and both chains to finalize. The defense against this is inbuilt into the protocol as double voting is a slashable offense and the attacker's 34% of total stake, which is close to 15 billion today, would be burnt. After which, the community would need to coordinate and face the dilemma of which fork to continue building on. What about if an attacker controls 50% of the total stake? If a group controls exactly half of the staked ether, they have enough power to create two separate versions of the blockchain. They can then use their stake to consistently vote against the rest of the honest validators, which would prevent both forks from finalizing. This would lead to inactivity leak and eventually finality on both chains. The only option here is for the Ethereum community to intervene and select which fork to continue building on. With that said, maintaining a precise 50% stake is tough since the number of validators can change and unpredictable networks 
network issues can shift voting power. Plus, even if a group could achieve this, the financial and operational cost of keeping such a balance is enormous. However, things change if an attacker tips the scales by controlling more than half of the total stake, that is, 51% or more. With this power, they effectively have a majority vote in Ethereum's decision-making. They can block specific transactions and even rearrange them to benefit themselves. Honest validators would have no choice to follow suit as their consensus algorithms would see the attacker's chain as the heaviest or longest, therefore enabling the chain to finalize. The defense against this would be the inherent risk to the value of the attacker's majority stake of ETH. 51% of staked ETH today would roughly amount to 21 billion or so, which would be dramatically devalued if the community steps in and chooses an honest minority fork. The final important threshold is at 66%. So at this point, imagine the attacker gaining control over the infinity gauntlet and all infinity stones. Okay, maybe not quite, but you get the idea. With this supermajority, they can unilaterally dictate the blockchain's direction without needing any backing from honest validators. Beyond influencing future transactions, they can also reverse past ones, essentially having the ability to rewrite history. However, amassing such a huge stake comes at an enormous cost, making it an impractical move. Also, as mentioned, the Ethereum community can't always collectively choose to follow a different version of the blockchain, rendering the attacker's efforts futile. It's worth noting that attacks with small amounts of ETH below the first thresholds are also possible, but they require extremely sophisticated and finely coordinated techniques, which are likely infeasible in real-world conditions and not worth the trouble. Now, you might have noticed by now that for many of these these extreme scenarios, the last line of defense is not any high-tech code, but instead people. The Ethereum community of developers, users, and enthusiasts is often referred to as the layer zero, which you can picture as the beating heart of Ethereum. The community can buy time by ejecting attackers out of the network, choose to impose heavier penalties such as destroying an attacker's staked ETH or revoking earned rewards. As a last resort, the community can also decide to ignore a dishonest chain, which is what happened in 2016 during the DAO exploit, which remains a contentious event till this day for those who believe code is law. Ultimately, while it might not be the most popular choice for everybody, the community can endorse what they deem the honest chain and guide validators and projects to continue building on it. Therefore, not every attack targets the code and instead can go straight for this layer zero heart. Attackers could spread misinformation about Ethereum, what it is or its future. They could threaten key developers or bribe influential figures in the community to way decision making. These aren't your typical hacker attacks and don't need vast sums of money or technical skills, but they can be incredibly effective at fragmenting and destabilizing the community. To thwart layer zero attacks, the Ethereum community ensures that the public has easy access to high quality, accurate information. Platforms like ethereum.org play a vital role by translating in-depth articles into multiple languages, ensuring misinformation information has fewer places to hide. It's also important that the community maintains an open and inclusive culture to avoid creating avenues for us versus them narratives. Ethereum also leans heavily on its mission statement and governance protocols by consistently returning to its core principles, decentralization, security, scalability, and sustainability the community can more easily identify and repel bad actors. Well, that wraps up our deep dive into Ethereum's potential attacks and defenses. And also don't miss our video on MEV, one of Ethereum's most pressing challenges. Click right here to watch.